My name is Ryan Monroy. I am a professor here at Miramar College. Been here 14 years. I'm gonna take you through how to use some of our equipment. Okay, so we have two different tire, tire and wheel assemblies here. The one on this side has a TPMS sensor in it. It's aluminum in construction, and it's pretty obvious that you're gonna have a TPMS sensor in this tire because you can see this aluminum stem. On this other rim assembly, you do see that it has a rubber valve stem like this sticking out of it. Common practice used to be you would take this tool, which is threaded on one, and you would screw it onto your rubber stem, and it bends like this so you can lever this thing out and break it off. And you can see here what happens to the, uh, the valve stem is that it just breaks off. And anytime that we are changing a tire on a rim, you always replace the valve stem. Anytime that you're replacing a tire with a TPMS sensor, you're going to rebuild the TPMS sensor. You just want to be careful that you're not ripping out the valve stem on one with a sensor because if you rip it apart, you're going to be replacing the sensor too, which gets expensive. In the shop, you're gonna find a couple different um, valve core tools. The one here, this red one, does not have a torque wrench built into it, and the one here does have a torque wrench. If you're working with a TPMS sensor, you have to use this torque wrench. I highly recommend that you do not have this laying around because if you leave a valve core loose, air can escape and cause a flat tire. So to ensure that your valve core is always tight, you can find these are five, ten dollars So they're not that expensive. Now I'm going to use this tool to remove the valve core from the sensor to get the air out of the tire. I'm gonna insert the tool in a register onto the valve core and I'm just gonna unscrew it. Lefty Lucy. So you wanna be careful when you're removing these valve cores. I had the tool over it and I captured it with my finger. And you can also see that I'm wearing safety glasses. Some of these tires could have up to 80 PSI in the tire. If this valve core gets launched into your eyeball, you could lose the eye. Now it's time to dismount the tire from the rim. But before we put it up on the machine, we have to break the bead. I'm gonna roll it into the bead breaker. I need to make sure that the uh, sensor is in the safe zone, which means basically from this half the tire over that means the bead breaker will not come in contact with our TPMS sensor okay so now I'm gonna break the bead here that broken the bead on this side now what I need to do is I need to break the other bead but again I have to be conscious of where the sensor is because if the shovel comes all the way across it can break the sensor so I need to get a good look at it it happens to be right here So now I've broken the bead on both sides. Now I can put it up on the table. So I have to make sure it's in the center of the table. I'm gonna push down on it. Okay, now I need to verify that I have clamped properly. So that means I gotta come take a look at it. Okay, everything looks good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this TPMS sensor and I'm gonna place it right under my duct bill here. And this is the tool that's gonna be used to get the tire off of the rim. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, get it all lined up right here. I'm gonna use this to lock it in place. Okay, now I need to make sure that my adjustment screw is correct. I gotta make sure that this is in place. We don't want the duck bill to come jumping up and over and destroying our rim. I like to use this end of the tool. It kind of has this bend in it and that's the side I prefer. Now I need to get this TPMS sensor placed under my duck bill here. So I've placed the bar here on the machine. We wanna make sure it stays in the groove. Okay, I'm gonna pull it with my right hand and I need to get the tire down in the drop center. So I'm gonna put pressure here and and bring the tire up and over while keeping the this other bead in the drop center. Okay, I'm gonna keep a flat hand on my bar and I am gonna slowly rotate the tire, making sure that I am not coming in contact with the TPMS sensor. I don't want this tire bead to come up against it, otherwise I could destroy it. Okay, now my tire is off. Now I gotta get the bottom bead off. So again, I gotta bring that TPMS sensor back under the duck head. And we'll get a good shot here 
of the tire clearing the TPMS sensor. Again, we don't want any pressure from the tire coming up against that TPMS sensor because it will break it. I'm gonna let it rest. A lot of people try to wrestle with this thing. The best thing to do is just physically pick the tire pretty much straight up, let the bar come up. I've got the tire in the drop center on this side. I'm clearing my TPMS sensor here. I've got the bar placed here where I'm on the other side of this bead. And all I'm gonna do is just pull this up and over. The tire is not coming in contact with the TPMS sensor. Okay, I can put my bar back in the hole and my tire has been dismounted. We've rebuilt the TPMS sensor. Now it's time to put the tire back on the rim. Okay, so we have some lubricant over here. It's a uh, soap. Do not use any petroleum product on here. You'll destroy the tire by using petroleum products. It's okay to put more lubricant than not enough. This will prevent the rubber from sticking to the rim or to the tooling. We want to protect that rubber. We don't want the rubber getting gouged or split. We just want to make sure that we provide a nice slippery surface for this tire to slip right on. When it comes to seating the bead, which means when we add air to the tire and wheel assembly we want this unit to seal up sometimes that's difficult the easiest way set yourself up for the most success is to generously lubricate the tire because this will help with seating the bead. When we were removing the tire from the wheel assembly, we had the TPMS sensor directly under this head. When we reinstall a tire, we want the sensor 180 degrees away from that tool. What that will do is it will place the tire back on the rim in such a way that the tire will never contact this TPMS sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this a little bit about 180 degrees. I need to uh, put the tire down. On the duck bill, we wanna rest the one tire bead here on the top. We want the tire to come underneath and this is gonna push the tire onto the rim. So we kinda get this crazy angle. We feed it on and I'm gonna put pressure here with my left hand. Again, my TPMS sensor is out of the way. You might be able to get a better look that I'm on top of the duck bill and I'm on this edge, I'm coming down below. I'm gonna kind of feed the tire. Okay, again, super important that this bead is in the drop center, meaning that's in the skinniest part of the rim or the smallest diameter portion of the rim. It's gotta stay in that area. If it comes up on the bead seat as I'm rotating, I'll rip the tire in half. Now, this tire is easy because it has a taller sidewall, but when we're dealing with like a 30 or 40 series tire, it can be very difficult to get the stay in the drop center. So I'm putting weight here with my left hand. I'm gonna rotate this. Again, this is staying in that drop center. My TPMS sensor is not coming in contact with the tire. There we go, we just mounted the tire. Anytime that we're going to be injecting air into the, into the tire to seat the bead, you wanna make sure that the valve core is out of it. And the reason why, there's actually two reasons. One reason is that it makes getting the beads to seat easier. We can actually get more air in the tire at the same amount of time and we're going to get the beads to seat. For a safety reason not to have the valve core in there is that if you hear something going on in the tire, it's making noises that you feel that it's not safe, you can quickly remove this thing and get air out of the tire. Also, when you add air, you do not want to have your hands or your body up over this. When I add air, this is built for me to be out of the danger zone because if this has a problem, it's gonna come up. Okay, so when I'm adding air to this thing, I wanna stand back and I wanna add air to it. Okay, so this is what I mean by seating the bead. You notice that no air was staying inside the tire. So what that requires is that I'm gonna have to come over here and I'm gonna have to play with the tire in order to get it to set, to set up. So I'm adding air and I'm gonna move it around until I feel that we're getting some air in it. You just, it's practice. You gotta play with it and understand that where you feel air escaping, you're gonna lift up on that end. You hear air escaping down the bottom, you have to press on it. And you're gonna do this little dance until you get this thing to set up. Don't forget that the way that I'm grabbing this tire, I'm clamping from the outside. So I got, it's got some air in it now. I don't wanna put any more into it until I remove the clamps. Now those clamps are out of the bottom bead and now I can inject air into it. Okay, I got 15 pounds of air in it right now. No crazy noises. Okay, I'm gonna take my valve 
core torque wrench. I'm gonna make sure again that I got my nickel plated valve core with my aluminum TPMS. Okay, when I remove this, so now I got this one hand, I can pull that off and I can go in there and drop my valve core down. And now I'm gonna tighten this up until my valve core torque wrench clicks. Done. So now that I've got my valve core in it, based on the information that is in the tire placard on the vehicle. So for example, this came off of the Toyota Corolla. In the door jam of the Toyota Corolla, it said this car needs to have 32 PSI in this tire. I understand if you look here on this tire, it says max PSI, 51 PSI. That's not how much pressure you put in this tire. You put whatever it says on the car. Now we can use that to add the tire pressure we need to get to 32. Once you've achieved that, hang this back up. Now we've assembled this tire in wheel assembly. Now it is time for balancing. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit and we look forward to seeing you on our next series of videos.